everyone. I'm so glad to see you here. I'm going to do a quick test to make sure that I'm broadcasting everywhere that needs to happen. I would love to, first of all, thank my sponsors at Five Star Guitars. Five Star is based in Beaverton, Oregon, so there is no sales tax. And if you use the promo code that we have, you go to fivestarguitars.com slash all access live and use a promo code of all access 15. You're going to save 15% off everything you see there. Plus you'll save money by not having to pay sales tax. So there were a few different hiccups in technology before we got to go live. So I'm going from a different place here today. So I don't get the captions to be able to share with you some of the cool things that we have, but I'm going to ask you. If you're watching this anywhere else besides YouTube, I would love it very much if you could subscribe to this channel at youtube.com slash all access live with Kevin Rankin. If you do so, you'll be able to not only see an archive of over 180 wonderful guests, but you'll be notified about some remarkable guests that I have coming up. Before today's guest, I got to tell you about Thursday. There's a gentleman I grew up with in Montana who I had no idea would become such an incredible visionary. His name is Yaro Craner, and he founded an organization called Hatch, which is essentially a think tank of experts in every field across the, the, uh, the spectrum. And these experts are sort of a collective to make this planet a better place, not just environmentally, but um, educationally, uh, culturally, financially sustainable. He's got a summit tomorrow morning at seven o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern. And it's called the Summit or Masters in Sustainable Living. So if you go to uh, just search uh, at sixsenses.com, S I X senses.com, look for Masters in Sustainability, you should check it out. I, um, I will have Yarrow on a Thursday. We'll talk a little bit about it. But if you want to go and check out how to make your world a better place and how to live in it effectively, go subscribe to the podcast. Now, my next guest, I have a couple of fun stories to share, but I'm going to have to share them with him. Uh, he is known throughout the industry as Iron Mike Savoya. He is the go-to uh, photographer for all the incredible rock monsters, rock cruises, and uh, the big rock events, the hard rock events. He's been the touring photographer for Journey. He does plenty of Seahawks games and everything in between. So I'm excited to share him with you. I got Mike Savoya here. What's going on, Mike? How are you doing, buddy? There he is. How are you? Here I am. Yeah, man. I uh, I'm gonna see if there's a way that I can uh, I can adjust our little um, our little windows a little. But I don't think I can. Uh, I use a different platform normally, and I can customize so that we don't have to look as much of my smiling face, but we get more of you. So. Oh, hey, yeah, that's okay. I like to be equal. You know, I don't have to take all the. Uh... Yeah, man. Well, that, you know, you uh, it's interesting, man. You are a rock star in uh in the scope of rock and music photography um do you remember the first time you and i met um it was a decade ago at least yeah you're right but i, um, but I, I, I uh, as soon as i tell you you're gonna remember but i bet you it doesn't stick out in your mind as much as it does mine yeah it was, it was a humiliating moment for me oh no yeah it was <laughs> oh, I, no. Uh, miles kennedy is a good friend of mine and uh he had me on the list for the show of the slash show at showbox soto oh, and uh, right. while he had me in the pit for photos <laughs> i was not i'm not a photographer so i had my little tiny point and shoot and, I, and another friend of mine who's a great photographer brent angelo if you're watching uh he <laughs> said dude you cannot go in the photo pit with that thing and so he handed me his canon and uh, and i've rolled in there and you know <sighs> As you know, amateur photographers, I mean, they stand out like a sore thumb, especially when you look at the photography, but I tried to make it look like I, you know, I was getting these artistic shots and, and, uh, <laughs> and basically it just got like miles crotch the entire time, you know, but not intentionally, but well, um, the girls are like that. So. Well, yeah, of course, man. And you know, I tried to stream a little bit of that, but no, you, um, you were gracious. I was kind of trying to just avoid stepping in your way, but there is an art to it. Right. Um, the, yeah. uh, it, so um, I had to share that with you. I, do you remember the event? Oh, I totally do okay. now. It's right. like, it's like, oh yeah. You know, know. Who's this freaking retarded guy being down here? But <laughs> I, um, 
I, you know, I should tell people, folks, if you're watching this right now and you're trying to participate in the chat, because we're doing, we had to go through Zoom instead. Um, so I don't get to see your live chat. I'm going to bounce back and forth as Mike tells some stories. I'll jump in uh, YouTube and Facebook chats. And if you're there, um, I'll try to answer. But if not, <laughs> you just got to go with uh, with Mike and I just sharing stories and talking stuff, man. So, uh, man. Okay. So I have a bunch of questions. First of all, uh, and we can do interview kind of stuff, but I, I just love to get to know you through your photography. Do you feel like that's kind of become your identity? I, I, yeah, I try to, at least, you know, I mean, most people on the internet know me through my music. Right. Um, but I shoot everything. I, I mean, yeah, especially with the down, you know, with this whole year off of no music, I've been out every single night shooting sunsets, just, getting out and doing non-music stuff and and i love shooting that stuff i love shooting nature and uh getting out hiking and stuff like that so uh you know when i post that stuff i think some people are a little little shocked you know at it but because that's all you're expected to be yeah yeah. well um it's interesting that you mentioned that during the pandemic you haven't been able to go out and shoot that stuff Mm-mm. as musicians, you know, we kind of take pity on ourselves and we think, oh man, every, our livelihood has been taken away. But if that is, you know, while you shoot everything else, I've rarely seen you outside that setting. I've seen you at Seahawk games, uh, some little <laughs> sports and sports uh, hang. And, um, and I've seen some of your other um, environmental photography and it's awesome. A particular thing, the space needle with the full moon behind it. One of the mm. coolest shots I'd ever seen. But and uh, and then at the Nam Show, right? So Nam Show, yeah, the Nam Show, yeah. Um, so guys, if you're watching this and you don't know what the Nam Show is, it's the industry's biggest sort of uh, sort of meet and greet. I mean, it, it's the, the yeah. industry gets all of the merchandisers together, all the companies, the manufacturers, and they're there to share stories and trying to sell product to each other and vendors. But all the musicians that play for those companies show up. And it's pretty much just Iron Mike going around hanging and shooting pictures of them. So that's uh yeah, that's walk, the, walking, walking like 10 miles a day and getting back to the hotel, looking at your feet and it look like clown feet, you know, that's, it's all big and swelled. And yeah. Yeah. And then coming home with Namthrax, right? So before COVID there was this, uh, this horrible flu that everybody seemed to get after going to the Nam show, because you're shaking hands and hugging hundred thousand people. And most of them might not be the healthiest. Right. So but I am. Um... Yeah, that yeah, that was always the thing, you know. And with the whole COVID thing, it was pretty much we've been to Nam for ten straight years, you know. We're we're immune to anything. <laughs> you, you think, yeah, man. <laughs> but yeah, no. Did you get vaccinated? Yeah, uh, I got one shot. Okay. Down. I'm My second you. shot's on the thirteenth. Mine's the twelfth, man. Ah, oh, right? see, there yeah. we go. A little 13th, celebration. Thirteenth, and I'm gonna be flying out on the fifteenth. So, <laughs> okay. So, where are you going? I'm going down to visit my mom okay. for a couple of weeks. I usually do that every year. Where's go down mom? to go down to Mesa and uh, hang with friends and get out and hike. God, that's so and beautiful. Get there. those sunsets. Yeah, you know there are different sunsets there than any place oh. else on the planet, man. It's a, uh, it's. Crazy. Um, I just, I was, I did a little escape as well went down to Mazatlan and even though I'm not a photographer I felt like I got the greatest sunset photos that I've ever seen every night it didn't even matter that I wasn't a photographer but you know having a wide angle lens certainly helps now you know yeah and, uh, um, and we were 18 floors up looking right at the ocean oh, wow. you know so that helps too but yeah um, well good I'm glad you get you get a chance to get away for a little bit and oh yeah yeah I, yeah I have to you know, it's, I can't be locked up in the house. <laughs> I've been out for the last year, basically doing yard work. Yeah. I, stuff, you know, I've so. avoided my yard work and I, I look at it and, but, yeah. but I did get in the woods myself, man. And are you, uh, are you the kind of guy that can kind of um, get lost out there and just find yourself in, uh, I mean, especially where you're, I don't know what part of Seattle you're in. But yeah. The yeah. Olympic- I mean, we, yeah, I can get out anywhere. I mean, you know, in Seattle, you can do anything within a half hour of, vicinity around the area and do whatever but yeah i'll go hike and just get away for a day go up to mount rainier oh one of my favorite places okay yeah i was gonna ask if you had a go-to spot oh yeah I, I, uh, bainbridge you know is one of my favorites and 
my, my grandpa built a house over there in the seventies. And so it's family. We, we go over there often and just to get into the rainforest there, you know, away Oh from yeah. The city is yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And they got all the gray whales going on up there right now. Really? Have, have yeah. you, uh, have you caught any shots of those? I did a couple of days ago down here where I live and I was, you know, usually each night when I go down and shoot the sunset, it's, um, we have the sea lions come through. We have a couple of seals that come awesome. visit every night. We have really? the por- we have the porpoises. You know, you know about Wait. twelve of them come through. Really? Yeah, they're like the dolphins, but I've they're like the shorter seen... kind. I think. Oh, you know what they called them? There's a funny name they have for them here, and uh, I forget something pig or something. I don't know what it was. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so they come through. You know, most of the nights, but then the other night. I got my long lens on. I'm looking out there going, what is going on out there? And I couldn't, you know, the water was just really bizarre. And as soon as I zoomed in, I saw all the barnacles, you know, on the skin. I said, oh, my God, it's a whale. And and I got a couple shots, you know, but it was so far out there. Yeah. You know, and they they didn't breach as much as I wanted it to. So, uh, you know, just getting a couple of shots. But, you know, it's just my thing, man. Every night I go down there and it's something new. So beautiful. Something you, new. You know what, man? I um, I go to the Oregon coast often too. Was there last week with my son. And mm. I told him, even though we go to the same spot almost every time, the beach is different every single time we visit. And yeah, it, uh, it's pretty crazy, you know, that uh, the you wouldn't think, you know, that the landscape would change that much, but nature's pretty rocking no, that way, it's, huh? It's weird. It's like the little park that I visit every night here at Brown's Point. Uh something different every night i catch it's just bizarre is that uh man yeah is that is, did you grow up there or did you grow up in Arizona? yeah I, I grew up i grew up in seattle area okay I, uh, down you know i lived in seattle and then the parents moved to the east side uh kirkland yeah so i lived in kirkland for years and then olympia and then now federal way okay Ash point area Awesome. Yeah, man, you're still close enough in. Although traffic in Seattle makes federal way a little bit farther to get downtown. Uh, yeah. It's I, yeah. We won't we won't go there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's it's that way everywhere, man. Yeah, I think it's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. We, you you know, know, especially like down where you're at, like Portland, man. You drive through there every time. I have gone there for years. Every time I go down there, I think, well, oh my God, what bridge do I go over? Yeah. It's like if I didn't have Google Maps nowadays, I'd be like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Do you, were you coming down to shoot photos some for shows? Yeah, yeah, I, could, yeah, you, you okay. should, I come down to Portland every once in a while for shows and stuff like that. So, all right. So, as a Portlander, I got to ask: Did you have a favorite place that you like to go shoot here? Hmm. Uh, gosh, the last time there was a theater. I don't even remember what the theater name is now. Probably the uh, Roseland. I would bet Roseland. Big, big yeah, brick building. Was, yeah, yeah, the Roseland. Okay. And is that so that's kind of the venue that's kind of a s- s- inside square, right? That's it. Yep. Yeah. 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 That, that one's fun. I like that place. It's you got get around. It's pretty, yeah, it's a great vibe. I mean, it's, it's like the Showbox Soto here in Seattle. It does have that same kind of vibe. Yeah. Yep. It's a little taller. They got the, the balcony. Yeah. This Soto doesn't have a balcony, does it? No, they have those little really tiny raised up, uh, like sort of raised tables out in front. Yeah. And- but it's nothing like, yeah, no. Nah. How about no what's balconies. your favorite place in, in, uh, in Seattle to shoot? My favorite place? Yeah. Paramount Theater. Oh, sweet. Last time yeah. I saw Miles was up there at Paramount. Yeah, yeah, the Paramount's just so, you know, so historic looking. Yeah. Especially, Outside and inside. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when I have that all access, you know, running around upstairs and getting the big wide angle and stuff, it's, just makes for amazing pictures. You know, speaking of all access, um, my, my show was meant to sort of introduce people to that. You know, you're privy of getting every single perspective um, where you know backstage or you're down in the pit where you're right up underneath mm-hmm. the stage way past where anybody else can get to unless they're yeah, you know, like Iron Mike. Um, for me, I was just shooting a bunch of Facebook Live when we were touring because I wanted my kids to see, hey, check it out. This is the drum riser <laughs> at the Greek theater. This is where we're playing tonight. And and a lot of other people started chiming in saying, man, we never get that perspective. Or, you know, I'd shoot a live cam, you know, from behind the kit as we're playing. Yeah. And I realized 
we're pretty spoiled in a big way, right? That we get yeah. opportunities that not a lot of people do. And um, do you kind of have to check yourself a little bit and go, okay, I can't take this for granted because people would kill to be where I'm at right now. It, it's super funny you said that because uh, my buddy, Neil Lim Sang, we've been shooting you know for years and we've built this relationship with all these different musicians and number one thing we always talk about is we never take anything for granted we do what we do we respect what we do we never step over those boundaries and that's where the relationships build over the years and there's never a day that I mean, never a day I, I go to a show or something and I, I think to myself like, wow, a lot of people would kill to be where I'm at, Yeah, you know, with, ac- with the access and everything else. And it's always in the back of my mind, just, you know, don't do anything it. stupid. <laughs> you know, well, okay. So let me ask you, man. Me, <laughs> like when I was stupid about 10 years ago, right? When you saw me in the pit at Slash's show and I'm trying to bumble around with this camera <laughs> Almost all the shots I got were completely blurry because I didn't want to shoot auto. I was trying to manually yeah. focus, right? Yeah. But tell me about uh, maybe some of the embarrassing moments when you first started doing this, you know, backstage moments or maybe a time where you made it fool yourself with uh, rock stars looking over your shoulder. Mm, man. I'm putting you on the spot right away, man. Yeah, because that one's hard. Uh, Did you get yelled at? Yelled at. Um man i've never gotten off the top of my head i don't don't really remember any situation where i've gotten yelled at i've gotten like uh i remember when i was shooting disturbed and i remember uh their security guy jason and i remember moving on the side because they had the fire and i remember one time i was like i'm gonna go over this spot and i kind of moved over And Jason was like, no, don't go there, you know, because, you know, the fire's there. And if I remember right, that was the show at the White River. And all of a sudden, this dude ran out of nowhere from backstage right right by us. And and he had to go run and tackle this dude because the flames were about to go off. Man. Yeah, that was was totally crazy. Almost became a Michael Jackson moment. Yeah. uh, Yeah. I um. You know, it's funny. I know that uh, you've shot Alice Cooper before. Glenn Sobel's mm-hmm. a dear friend. And we talked about the fire stuff. Because when he had to sub for Tommy on five shows, when Motley Crue and Alice were touring and Tommy, right. his, you know, his tendonitis was bad and he couldn't play. And so they said, yeah. Glenn, they got, yeah. got Glenn in. And he said, the greatest thing was that he um, he had Tommy at the sat in the monitor board in his in-ears saying, uh-huh. all right, all right. So here, now make sure that... Uh, Hold your breath for a second. Okay, here comes the pyro. Ready? Three, two. And uh-huh. and he was talking him through all these things. And he said, you know, don't look at the fire right away. Or, you know, if you, if you breathe it all in, because it's right next to the drum yeah. riser, you know. But people don't think of those things, right, when they're watching shows. Oh, yeah. I, I'm looking yeah. right now. I was going to try and share a couple of your photos from your Facebook page. Um, I'm just looking through your albums as we talk. And you've got this really wide range of bands from way back in the day. Um, you've been doing this for a while. Like, how did you start getting into music photography? Ooh, just going to concerts. And I, I remember like the first concerts I ever went to, I, I always thought, you know, it's like, wow, it'd be amazing to capture the overall perspective of what I'm seeing. And, you know, as a kid or a teenager, you saw that in magazines, but not really, not like I wanted to, you know, to the way that I do it. And uh, yeah, so I started going to shows and I started bringing my little Kodak Instamatic just for the hell of it. Cause, cause back then, you know, they allowed you and you, you didn't have to have a pass or anything. Sure. So I'd shoot, you know, these little Kodak, shots from the crowd and stuff and and then after a while it was pretty much you know i need to get a photo pass i need to get something so i needed a better camera okay and i ended up this is a funny story my first real 35 millimeter film camera 
I would, you know, I was, I don't even know how old I was, 16, 17. Oh, okay. Hey, Scott, you froze up for, or Mike, sorry, Mike, you froze up for just a second. I was responding to Scott, but uh, if you're here, buddy, um, you froze for just a moment. Hopefully we pop you back in. <clears throat> I, um, it, this is great. Actually, where See, we so can really wasn't working. Hey, so I said, I need Mike, money. I need money. It was hold, three. Hold, hold tight yep. for just a second. You froze up for a okay. minute. And I got to tell you okay. where you froze was the greatest screenshot ever. So when we go back through and you look at the archives, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, uh, you were deep in thought and pondering. So I'm really sorry about that, but okay. back up just a hair about it. So you, you needed money. So, yeah. So I needed the money and obviously I didn't have it. So I went through my basketball card or my card collection oh, no. and I had two cards and one, well, two of the same card. So I could sell this card. Well, this card was a basketball card and it was a special perforated three player card. So you could actually, you know, it's a regular size card and you could sit there and rip them apart. And then okay. you had three cards, right? But I was always never, never do that. So I didn't, but on this one card, I had the rookie card of Larry Bird oh. and the very middle of it was Dr. J all-star something. And on the other card was rookie card, Magic Johnson. Oh my so God. I had this card. I had two of them. Right. So I said, I could sell one. Right. So I found this guy at, at a, a card store and he ended up buying it from me from like, 850 800 dollars something oh, like that no. and back then that was like a lot of money so right. i turned around and i bought my my it was a minolta 8000 i camera okay. and i bought that it came with the lens it came with the flash bag the whole thing off one card and that's what got me started uh, so then when i had that the quality was way, way better than sure. the uh, little pocket cameras you'd stick down the front of your pants to get into a show. Right. And, and it, uh, which is what I brought to this last show first. But yeah, <laughs> you know what, man? I, I, it's think because I kept thinking, you probably don't even want to know what that card's worth right now. But if you think about what it's brought you, right, the, mm -hmm. the opportunities and the experiences uh, you've had. Totally. I, it, it's it's tenfold. And, yeah. and I actually did check not too long ago. And it was maybe a couple hundred dollars more. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So I'm, yeah. I'm fine with it. I, I don't even care if it was 5,000 now. It's just like yeah. what that camera caught, you know, with all the shows that I've shot in, you know, in the late eighties and nineties before I switched to digital, uh, it's priceless. Yeah, man. You know, and the funny thing is, guys, if you're watching this from other places, like I, I have a lot of uh, friends that watch from Germany and Australia um, who only know about Seattle because of bands from that era, right? I mean, you grew up shooting bands that were in the height of their popularity, right? From, mm -hmm. from late 80s through mid 90s, there was no bigger place in the world. It was it was the Hollywood of the modern times, right? It, and uh, <laughs> um, it's what brought me out here. Actually, you know, I, I, I was friends with Dave Aberzies, um, Okay, yeah. worked with him in Montana yeah. and he, he had contacts and was trying to get me to come out to the Northwest with my band. But I was afraid to move to Seattle, even though I had family up in Bainbridge and Kirkland. <laughs> it, uh, it just didn't feel like home. It was still too big for me. And now yeah. Port Portland doesn't uh, necessarily feel too homey either, you know, but um, but what I discovered when I came out in 94 was it was the tail end of that era a little bit, right? The, uh, the post grunge. And it was uh, sort of the, you know, the Everclear uh, Lilith fair era kind of stuff. Yep. Right. But just prior to that, you were shooting bands like Alice in Chains, Nirvana, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam. Right. Um, yeah. It, and yeah. you've already, you had already made a name for yourself kind of by that point there. Yeah, you know, with the and and with the whole Seattle Seattle scene, I was more, I was more metal. Okay, I, so Queensrÿch. Yeah, Queensrÿch, Metal yeah. Church, you know, s stuff like that. And you know, when the whole grunge thing hit, I was pretty much. I mean, I knew everybody and, and everything, but I was not. It just wasn't my passion. Yeah, 
you know, metal was my passion. So I kind of let grunge kind of fly by the side, you know, I didn't shoot it as much as I should (laughs) have, you know, but on the other hand, I wouldn't have ended up where I am today with some of the bands that I've worked with. And Oh yeah. I, I know that you've got some real cool history with Queensryche and we can get into that in a second. I was thinking about the cards because you were talking about these rookie cards. No, mm-hmm. um, I just seen some LeBron cards, some special LeBron card that sold for 5.2 million this week. And I, I was thinking, I hope one of yours was not going to command that, you know, but yeah, I am. Um, yeah. Man, I, I had to look through my, I still have it. I have all my cards still. Do you? Were you, yeah. you were a big collector when you were younger? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Early 70s. Nice. The 70s and the early 80s. Did you do like, um, like Mariner cards as they were getting big too? So you, yep. like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah it's a- Griffey, you know, Griffey rookies and all that stuff. So did you get passes for those kinds of events? Like, you know, back when like Griffey was playing with Mariners, did you have mm-hmm. any, I mean, I shot Griffey a couple of times. I mean, I shot, sp- I shot some sports. Yeah. Well, I've seen you know, one, of my, one, one of my favorite, my, one of my favorite ones that I challenged myself and I used my dad's camera. He had a, he had a Canon 35 millimeter and um i shot my (laughs) randy johnson was pitching and you know he throws 100 miles an hour right yeah i'm like oh my god this is gonna be a challenge right and i'm sitting there okay shutter's gotta be this and blah 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 and i'm like and you're shooting film so you're like you're just shooting and then you're like okay well maybe i got it maybe i didn't right and uh yeah when i got the film back it was like i i had one of my favorite shots i got randy just full throwing and the ball's just like five feet in front of him no so i was just like okay i can do this (laughs) yeah okay so on the flip side right now in the age of digital when people get access to cameras and they're shooting a thousand shots instead of five selected Mm -hmm. shots um opportunity to catch maybe that magic moment a little bit higher right but to get sort of um recognized and be able to distribute your photos where people recognize the art in them Mm -hmm. and to get paid for your craft Mm -hmm. is it i mean is it something that you see uh, oversaturated right now with the um like getty images and those other online sort of repositories making it a little too diluted in the industry yeah i mean it's it's to a point now where it's just like you know everybody's a photographer right with a phone, a phone even with a phone i mean everybody's a photographer everybody's got this and that so uh it makes it difficult because you know especially nowadays concerts the pr companies are allowing a lot more people in you know in the pit to shoot the first three songs right. than usual so you know you're getting 10 to 20 people a show they're all posting photos and I think with online and the internet and stuff, a classic photo is a classic photo. But when there's 20 of photos, you know, I think it's an overwhelming to the consumer. So if you're like online looking at concert photos and stuff, it's pretty much <laughs> you see a good one and then they're off to the next one. Right. You know, I don't see any any stuff nowadays that's ever going to be like the stuff in the 60s or the 70s when there was only 10 dudes shooting and those photos are just timeless i mean they're going to be timeless forever and nowadays it's like it's a lot harder to to catch something that someone else doesn't have because there's you know 30 (laughs) 20 30 people shooting a show and that's where i've you know, I have had the blessing of the access. Sure. The yeah. full show shoots. That's where you can, you know, you, you can separate yourself because you're getting a full show, you're getting different views, or even backstage on you know, on stage, backstage, stuff like that. And that's what I like focusing on because I like I like capturing the whole the whole vibe of the show. You know, you were talking about classic shots too. What do you feel like constitutes a, a classic shot? What makes the shot stand out? Hmm. I mean, it's gotta be something that as soon as you see it, you're just, it, it takes you somewhere else. It takes okay. you to a you know, different time or, or a, a moment. 
And with those photos, you know, back in the 60s and 70s, just because there wasn't as many people shooting, you know, those photos are just, they're going to be timeless forever. Because, you know, like I said before, nowadays, everyone's shooting. Yeah. So it's it's just oversaturated. You know, you talked about the shots that not everybody gets to see. Even if somebody's in the photo pit, not a lot of people get to see this. This is one of the, my favorite shots that, I, that I've seen of yours. And I believe, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, I think this is Neil Sean, right? When you were touring with him. Oh, yeah, that is. Um, wait, where is that? Yeah, you, uh, yeah, I don't know if the description of the photo you're looking at. Uh, obviously, it's a baseball stadium. Yeah, <laughs> it's think, not Dodger Stadium. Um, no. You it's, actually have a cool shot from the other angle at Dodger Stadium, though. I know. Yeah, I think I think that one is uh, maybe it's St. Louis. Okay, it yeah. just perspective is amazing, right? I mean, it looks yeah, like you're right so in front stuff, of the drum so, riser. Yeah, so stuff like that. I mean, you've seen stuff like that in the past, but it's it's so cool to have you know the opportunity to to get stuff like that, you know, and uh, to have the access and there's another one that there's that shot right I mean, yeah getting this um this the you know i asked you about the classic shot and you said it takes you someplace for me yeah. this is almost the angle i mean I, that other yeah. shot of neil was pretty much the angle that i get right from every night mm-hmm. I, yeah I, you're the drummer <laughs> to stare at people's butts right but yeah, yeah but this shot tells so much you know um this you know sort of um the reverence of of the fans towards the band they get out there and they get their you know their taking the bow they're taking their uh you yep. know they get their arm in arm but look at the crowd like what you capture in the crowd is so unbelievable they're um that's their escape right they're able yep. to sort of put everything outside and just get lost in the music for a couple of hours and exactly. you nailed it you nailed it with yeah. this one. it's a uh, it's fun to see i um i just yeah, it's it. it's a you know it's a blast to shoot just to to get that perspective because for being in the crowd you I mean you're looking at the band, right? You're seeing somewhat of a, of your surroundings, but to give a view of what the band is actually seeing, I mean they 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 have the best view of the night, right? You yeah, know, they're looking oh, at you know, especially with the stadium shows, you sure. know, <laughs> fifty, you know, thirty, fifty thousand people. Oh, it's you know? it, it's unreal. What when you went out with Journey, uh, was that the first stadium tour that you were shooting consecutively? Yeah, that that was uh, the 2018 tour, and that was with uh, Def Leppard. Okay, and wow, that that was a dream tour because oh, okay. we hit the stadiums. I mean, that you know, Mad- you know, and then the the arenas, right? I mean, Madison Square Garden. Oh uh, God, was Met that a dream Stadium. gig for you? That was my ultimate. Yep, Matt. I I I remember when I first walked in there through backstage out into the place it was kind of like i just about cried because i was just like you know it hits you you're like what is this you know i I think back as me as a teenager you know when i first started getting into music and and i think back then to now it's like would i've ever thought that i would have been in madison square garden right shooting journey Right. On stage. It, yeah. On yeah. stage in 2018. Like, no. Right. It just, it, it, you know, it was a far off dream. So with them, you know, with, with the, the Sean's, you know, I, 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 I so appreciate them because they've given me a, a whole different, uh, it, it's just been a dream. I mean, that's yeah. the only word I can say. So how, tell me how that happened. How did, uh, how did you connect with the journey tour Oof. as a photographer? Um, let's see here. The first time I shot journey was like 2011 and Dean Castronova yeah. was the drummer. Well, yeah. I kind of grew up with Dean from the wild dog days, yeah, from Portland to Seattle. And so he was a drummer and then they came up, I think it was 2014 and uh you know dean set me up to shoot and uh you know they gave me all access so i could shoot the whole show and shot the whole show you know did the shots after the show i got you know i met neil and 
yeah, he loved my photos. You know, I mean, he loved my photos. And then he uh, flew me down to San Francisco for uh, what I think it was kind of like a day on the green. And it was Journey and Santana and two other bands. And uh, he just wanted to see what I got. (laughs) Wow. And so went to went to there and uh man there was some pressure there because i was like what 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 am i gonna do what kind of shot that you know for somebody that's been shot a million times right you know 40 50 years what am i gonna bring to the table so yeah um, so what did you you know what i did (laughs) i went I went like a, uh, a, a a goat. I went to the very top of the stadium that I, my feet could take me there in San Francisco at at and Park when it was called that then. And I got a wide angle of this stadium, the bridge in the background, the boats in the water, and the city on the side. And there's the band there. Really? And that shot right there, I, th- I think, <laughs> you know, got me the gig <laughs> yeah man is that yeah. in your list of uh of stadium tour picks yeah it should be somewhere okay. in there because it's it's the classic shot oh, i mean it was so... just like soon as soon as i took it uh, i was just like wow this is crazy oh my gosh i'm looking and, and the a... fun and the funniest thing about the shot was is you know it was dark up there you know okay. way up there yeah so i had to really bring my shutters you know slow shutter to get some light in right well up there in the you know how the third level of a stadium and people are rocking out and stuff well i could feel it moving you know the the floor moving and i was like oh this is gonna be hard so i had to lean i had to like put my arm against this pillar and just sit there like this and i think i was on a a second maybe a second and a half shutter and i'm sitting there just going Oh, please, please. And I just push the shutter. I don't even breathe, you know, and let it go. And it's like, I looked at it and I was like, oh boy, I I hope it's clear, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was, it was money. So that became my, my go-to do thing at every stadium during, you know, the fourth and fifth song, I would run from the pit or wherever I was. And I'd find the, um, the, uh, the The, highest yeah the highest location and so uh i have the little nickname as the goat (laughs) the goat yeah you've got the you've got the goatee as well yeah i got the goatee too so you know is this is this the shot that you're talking about the the, the bridge in the back yeah i can't see it It just oh there it is you found it now that's awesome so you can see some of the boats you know on the side there and then you got the city over there and then I don't know what the bridge is there, but then I think that's Oakland. Yeah. With oh, yeah. all the lights on the other side. Yep. yep. And yep. Uh, yeah. And so uh, when I took that shot, by the time I got back all the way back down to the pit, I was a sopping mess. Oh, you know, yeah. it was because it, it was it was a summer gig. So oh. it, I was sweating like crazy. And I just remember, I remember between songs, Neil looked down at me like, where the hell did you go? Or what yeah, the hell? Like, <laughs> like, why are you sweating so much, man? Yeah, I'm up here on stage. Exactly. <laughs> I, uh, uh, dude, I'm sweater. I honestly, even when I was thin and fit, I was a sweaty guy. Yeah. And the funny thing is just, uh, we were touring. We had the tubes on tour with us mm-hmm. a year and a half ago. And I'm a big fan of the band prayer Prince. Their drummer is this legend. Right. And it was weird. They're mm-hmm. opening for us. And I, I was kind of, humbled or humiliated <laughs> i was shy but he is such a fun you know gregarious guy and yeah we played in uh, at fiddler's green in denver and at sound check you know we went on we did our sound check at two o'clock in the afternoon and it was hot mm. and i'm pouring sweat after like a couple of songs of sound check and i walked <laughs> back to him and i said dude even before sound check if you can get a fan out there you're gonna want to get one it's freaking crazy out there and he goes man the only time i'm sweating on this whole tour is when you hug me and I'm like, damn it. <laughs> I, uh, I, so you got known as the goat. I'm sweaty guy, sweaty metal. Like Kevy metal was the nickname. Now it's sweaty metal. Sweaty metal. Fuck. Damn it. Yeah. But there's yeah. nothing you can do, man. It's nah, like, man. it's clammy and hot, man. It's, oh, yeah. It's 
especially back east, as you know, right? You go oh, to the, man. You, know, you shot some of those shows like Atlanta. Yeah, and, especially with you, it's like, you know, the drummer, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, man. You, you know, it's, if you don't have the fans, you're going to you're going to pass out. Yeah. I, like You do see a lot of guys with oxygen. You know, it's smart. Mm-hmm. I, you know, uh, Kelly Kigi was showing me that he's got little hits of oxygen, little, little like uh, like the little cans. Yeah, those little cans. Oh, yeah, just, we got them just, all out. Yeah, that's smart, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I need to get me some of those before we go back out. We're, yeah. we're heading out next week, as a matter of fact. Oh, really? We are. Yeah. After 15 months. Yeah, we've got the show oh. in San Diego next week. And uh, but this is not about me. This is about you. Yeah, yeah. But, tell me, yeah. tell me about your wall there, man. You've got some uh, some platinum records there. What's going on? Yeah, what's... my kind of my kind of wall. I'm putting it together. I have so much that it's hard to just sit there and go, oh, I'm gonna put that there and put that there. I mean, I got frames all over the place in here. Um, yeah, I just got a couple things up there. I mean, I got my uh, the Queen's uh, That was the first promo I did for him when Todd joined the band. Okay, and that's my favorite favorite photo we did that underground bus tunnel oh, uh, in wow. seattle so that's, really yeah it turned out it all the photos were just it was so cool because of the architecture i think in each tunnel there was different different architecture so we got some really cool stuff really cool stuff so that photo there that's my favorite yeah. um what i think there's oh yeah right behind me man yeah let's see i go this way see billy idol Oh yeah, you shot yeah. that one, the black and yeah, white. That's my favorite. That's my favorite one. Oh, that that one is the classic. You know what? Actually, here I'll grab it. I'll okay, cool. Really yeah, because this one here, I love. I love this just because uh, you've seen the classic Billy shots. Oh my god! And look at that sneer. man. His full fist, sneer. Yeah, that, that snarl, everything. Yep. And I've shot him a bunch of times. Yeah but I've never gotten that two times. That's so, so good, yeah. Man. So I had to do, I had to do, a, I had to do a print of that. That it, This is, I don't know. I love that you're able to see the magic in your shots enough to frame them, you know, because I would bet you're getting one or two that you're proud of at least out of every show, you know, and, and you've shot a lot of shows. So if you've shot, you know, if you took one piece of everything, you know, pull all my hard drives yeah, out. Yeah, 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 let, yeah, let's go through the archives, man. I yeah. uh, tell me, um, and you and I both know the cruises are are nutty, oh. right? So uh, you've been doing Monsters of Rock cruise for a couple of years, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, How did you hook up with those? Was it Queens Rock that connected you with that? Uh, um, no, actually, it was it, it, the story on how I connected on the on the whole cruise thing was. Um, uh, there was a guy named Dave Stabley and he was part of the video or he was the video crew for monsters of rock. And I guess one of the guys on his team dropped out at the last second and he knew of my photos through Queens, right? Cause he was a big Queens, right? Fan. So uh, he ended up sending me a message and he's like, Hey, I've seen you all your Queens, right? Stuff. You know, it's like, this is what I do. And, I don't know if you do video or not, you know, and if you want to come down and, you know, we got a cruise and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, sure, you know, <laughs> I'm yeah. going to turn that down. No kidding. Know? So, yeah. So what happened was I ended up going uh, on the cruise and I ended up doing video for him. So I had these assignments, you know, you had to set up the tripod, uh, you know, either upper deck, lower deck and do video. So once it's all set up and you hit, record i didn't have to do any real zooming in or out so what i ended up doing is i had my camera with me so um i started taking pictures and um you know i remember going back to the uh room and we had uh slow internet access it took forever for one photo to load and i just i just posted a couple photos you know like hey this is what's going on this is where i'm at right well boss man (laughs) saw it because it was online right yeah and so i remember getting a, a message to uh you know from larry and uh he said come on down to the office so i was oh, like no. oh i'm busted <laughs> it's like here's the here's the new dude you know just taking photos when he's supposed to be doing video well i was doing video but i took some photos and so i went down to the office and i was like hey what's up you know it's like and all he said to me was is keep taking photos Oh, nice. and I was like, okay, you know, he's like, I, I, I want to see what you got, right? Okay, cool. So I wasn't really in trouble, you know, but uh, so yeah, so I 
start, you know, I just went back doing my video stuff, but then I'd take pictures. And uh, after the first cruise, uh, Dave lost me. <laughs> oh, and I became I became a photographer for all the cruises. Oh my god! As he did, you know, he was video. You know, he does video for all the cruises also. So, uh, so yeah. So that's the short of the story. But he brought uh, you in, and you uh, your stripes. Yeah, yeah. He get... yeah, he got me on his team, and then I got kicked <laughs> off of it as fast as I got on it. And but right. it's I, he got it. it and, I, and he I, understood. I pre, you know, I, I mean. I say it a million times. I appreciate Dave for forever because yeah. what a gig. Yeah. I mean, okay. for the cruises that we, we get to do, you know, Monsters Rock cruise, uh, cruise to the edge with it. Yes. And it's yeah. all the prog stuff. Moody blues cruise. Uh, You're doing now we have a new one. Oh uh, yeah. On the blue cruise. We did Def Leppard cruise. I mean, there's so many cruises in the last seven years we've done. And the, access i mean because you got oh. a cruise with you know monsters yeah. rock cruise usually has like 40 40 bands right 40 bands on all the other cruises have 20 to you know 20 yeah. 25 so the bands that are on these cruises i would have never seen in my lifetime you know right oh man god it's been every time i step on that darn cruise it's a dream yeah man. some of You're the getting... artists i've gotten to work with and do photo shoots you know uh like john wade that was oh. one of my he was on i think it was a moody Baby's blues cruise. cruise okay and i did one of his meet and greet shoots and then we were in this cool room and i was like hey you want to do some like promo shots and he was like yeah man let's do it and so you know here i am <laughs> with john wade man and we're just doing Hang photos on. and you know, i mean there's you so know, many stories i well like uh, i want to know about this story in a second but i'll tell you john wade he's one of those guys like you he doesn't take anything for granted now i think he's yeah. been you know he's looked at his his um the chronology of his history of playing music we did a show together in chicago about five years ago and he came and sought me out just before we walked on stage and he said mm. tell me you guys are doing wishing and I said, well <laughs> yeah and he goes that's the greatest song from the eighties that's out there. I'm like, no dude, you're the, you're the hit guy. What? Yeah. And he, said, he said, no, man. He said, it's like the perfect make out, you know, girlfriend <laughs> song. And I said, well, that's really cool that you brought it up. Right. I mean, that was nice that he, cause some of those guys, right. I mean, they've been around long enough that they're not even thinking about other bands. They're certainly not watching the other yeah. bands cause they're doing their own thing. But I thought John yeah. Waite, he scored some points with me for that night, you know? Yeah. So really rad dude he's rad and, and what a great songwriter i mean yeah he got, still has a voice <laughs> the baby yeah it's like solo stuff the baby's bad english yeah oh, and still yeah. sings yeah like crazy great band yeah. Yeah. so this shot yeah. with queen's yeah, this shot here man this is uh queen's reich and this oh this is on the mega cruise yeah so this is the mega desk cruise man and this was this was a that was what a cruise that was because of course metalhead me yeah you know that was my cruise um, yeah, Casey here, uh, drummer got a uh, pie in the face because it was his birthday. Oh man, that is and yeah, that was it was lime. I, I, oh, you know what? It was whipped cream. It wasn't even a cake. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I just remember seeing the two little whipped cream pies under the stage behind him. So he no. never saw them. Oh, so I God. was like back there getting pictures of it before it went on stage, and then went on stage and they they nailed him <laughs> that's uh, i love the man that kind of stuff is the best you know because yeah really people don't yeah. uh they don't often get an opportunity to you know to like be this close but the shot you've got of todd right there is, and and actually michael too man both of those yeah, guys but michael just, and todd's faces are, are yeah, priceless they are man and and then i don't even know who the dude is in the background above casey's uh yeah his face is hilarious too <laughs> he's they're, they're trying to get uh they're trying to get in there for the the photo op but um yeah. you know and i hadn't actually seen them without scott playing drums you know and, mm -hmm. and um Scott Rockenfield was definitely one of my inspiration, my biggest inspirations. And uh, I think if I remember right, when I met him up uh, at uh, playing with the blue thunder, I was, uh, I, cause I did a oh, yeah, few right. stints up there sure. guest drumming with them. And I think I saw you there as well. Yep, shooting yep, with Scott Rockenfield yep. and he had his son with him. 
he had his kid playing on that huge 90 inch drum and his son i think was like 10 at the time and <laughs> like you know the drums eight times as big as him you yeah know? but um but the backbreaker <laughs> uh, i'm a huge fan of rocket field and um you know i will say i think todd latour really made that band um alive again you know that oh. really i mean it brought you know, because there's all the discussion about, oh, if it's yeah. like, you know, if it's not Jeff Tate, it's Queens, yeah. it's not Queens, right? You saw Queens, right? In the day, you yeah. know that Todd not only sounds like warning era uh, Queens, right? But yeah. he's actually a much cooler dude, in my opinion, too, man. So, you know, I, yeah, uh, yeah after- he, he came in and saved, saved the boat for sure. Cause yeah. like, I, I mean, for me personally, you know, it's like, yeah, I, I, before he joined the band, I was pretty much, man it's yeah. just it wasn't good no <laughs> you know yeah. and uh you know and then with scott you know scott's just amazing I, I mean to be behind him so many times shooting photos or video stuff man that dude is uh he 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 has his own thing going on he i really don't even does. know how to explain it but the thing with him i always thank him for i got my first in ears uh uh, from ultimate ears because of him really because his snare drum is so freaking snappy loud yeah i remember the first time i went behind him i felt my brain rattle in my head <laughs> oh. and i've been behind drummers many times but his snare is so high tuned oh. i was like i need uh, i wow the, yeah so the, i went the, i went to ultimate ears and my buddy joe and i was like i need i need to protect myself I am you know and even mad. scott said it too he's like oh my god dude you gotta wear something you know yeah oh, were you not even foam, wearing any protection oh yeah yeah because i i had the foam ones in yep the first time and that that doesn't they help. don't do jack. no i mean especially those frequencies you know like and symbols man you know like it, yep. I, I actually bought a china boy specifically because of scott i went out and i found that very that zildjian high china 18 mm-hmm. inch high china because of his uh, lady wore black that was the uh, you know that yeah. i um uh it's funny because i he's probably heard that same story a billion times you know but i was um i what i loved about him was that he was and that band was kind of like that too the perfect combination of metal and prog you know mm-hmm. they they uh they just they you know, like bands like yes, were were great rock bands, but they were prog bands, you know, and yeah. and and rush, of course, prog. But um man, you know, Queensryche had such a heavy edge. And uh I yeah. um I I think you know it's great that you know it's almost like I really when I think of Queensryche now, I think of Iron Mike because I've seen so many pictures with you and those guys that uh <laughs> it's almost like you're you know like the uh it, the ghost it's member. Fun, it's funny now because it's like a lot uh, each day I get on Facebook or whatever, Instagram is like, you know, they're always sharing my pics. So it's, oh yeah it's like man. I got I got a lot of pics. <laughs> yeah, you do, man. I, I have you actually just kind of figured out over time like how many photos you may have actually taken. No, but I know I did of the last decade with Queensryche and I was, oh man, what were the numbers? It was, it was dumb numbers. Yeah. It, it was, it was a lot. Thank God you're not developing film, right? No, but yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know how it, I would even do that because with all the film that I took and stuff, I had a, I don't even know where that thing is. I had a thing I, I'm organizing stuff. So I'm throwing like all my backstage passes in a box. And then I have uh-huh. all my film prints going in another one i'm going through those you still have those that's good yeah oh yeah i got all my negatives so i have to go through the negatives because prints sometimes you you know you just lose them but all the negatives i have them you know but yeah i mean geez and this is a funny thing like i I say with my buddy neil too uh lim sang we uh joke because we've been doing this for so many years yeah and how many passes we've gotten so this is like this is just like one of my boxes oh yeah of, man that passes that's more than uh than most bands ever have yeah for sure so that's just that's just some god you know you know yeah it, neil neil's cool. another guy i love that guy and he's got the als group that he's been working to because this yeah. brother yeah um, that um he and I need to talk because uh, back at Miles' show at the sh- at the Paramount, I think yep. um, it was either that or Crocodile. It was Crocodile actually when he did his solo thing. But um, 
But yeah, Neil was talking about his brother and the work he's doing um, to promote ALS. He had guitar picks made with Neil. Oh, and, right. He has his little, yeah, his yeah. Little guitar pick. yeah. Great dude. And yeah, um, I, I got my ALS band on here. My best friend's nice. got it. Wicked drummer here in Portland yeah. who is no longer able to play drums. And uh, I, you know, when I talked to Neil, I had, my friend had just been diagnosed and over mm. time, I think about him a lot. I think about Neil's efforts because yeah. he was trying to do fine yeah, ways. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Cause it was with his dad. I mean, he's lost oh, his, his dad. dad. And, and, uh, geez, I, I don't even remember how old Neil was. He lost his dad. That's, it's a horrible, horrible yeah, disease. Yeah, it's horrible. So it's, so it's cool seeing him do something, you know. Yeah. He's doing like, something he, like that. He was, yeah. you know, it was uh, very unselfish. And I like that he brings attention to that stuff. You know, yeah. you guys, you have a platform where you guys are yeah. at, you know, and yeah. I, um, I, I think uh, one thing that I really appreciate when you're posting, you seem very humble, you know, even though like wild and like Iron Mike is just this wild, you know, bombastic, you look like this crazy maniac, but, <laughs> but you also, you seem like, uh, you know, you're very appreciative for what you have, you know, you've got this persona that mm-hmm. precedes you. Right. So yeah. once people get to meet you and they think, He's actually just a really, he's a really chill, fun dude, man. I don't think I've ever seen you without a smile. Oh the, man. I, I, yeah, I smile all the time. That's great. I, mean, I have, I have, a, I, my mom, I have little pictures that I've been finding and I was smile. I think, I think I was smiling at birth. <laughs> he came out of the womb. Yeah. yeah that, uh, Here oh. I am. <laughs> uh, John brought in the chat says, uh, iron Mike is America's finest ah. rock photog. I love that. That's uh yeah. John, John's, John's amazing. He, he was kind of, uh, before me and he used to shoot, uh, all the shows I wish I could have shot in the Paramount theater. He shot, kiss i mean yeah he shot all the the early 70s stuff at the paramount oh man every time i see his stuff i'm just like god i wish i was 10 or five or ten years younger yeah okay yeah yeah older actually i'm glad you bring that up because i was going to ask you tell me you know maybe list like the top three that you wished you could have shot that are the bands are no longer around or maybe even the newer versions are not the same band that had been, you know, like Queen, Three of course. Bands that I wish I could have shot. Yeah. <laughs> like in their heyday or something. Yeah. Okay. Number one. Okay. I'll, I'll say it's today. The Plasmatics. Oh, wow. Wendy Williams. Yes. <laughs> oh my I God. never Wendy got o. to shoot Wendy O. Williams. I mean, my for God. me, rock and roll metal is a show it's 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 the whole thing and yeah. the plasmatics wow that's the I mean, number can you one imagine shooting that show they're blowing up cars on stage yeah you know? i don't think She's i could doing... have actually focused enough to take a shot because like everything is so like yeah so wild yeah. yeah yeah they were just yeah that that, that would have been crazy totally you know? that's a good one um, i like that nice yeah that's my number one windy okay. williams plasma i mean i'm i'm such a big fan of theirs right um on. god what other bands have shot um boy i have a story of yeah. one okay i i always wanted to shoot tom petty oh and wow. i had the opportunity to but my wife is a bigger fan okay and so the opportunity came and I was like, nope, you can shoot. And then she went and shot Tom. Oh, Petty, right? Nice. Really? And then that was like his sixth or seventh to last show before he passed away. So I was like, Oh, you know, <laughs> that's, that's, that's not really happening. Cool you though, you know, I've seen her actually, yeah, working with you as well. I, down at the mm-hmm. NAMM show, I think I, I met her like yep. with you. And, oh, yeah. Um, she's the wrangler for you in a lot of ways. Because <laughs> yeah. I think, weren't you getting together uh, for Terry Beatty? Maybe you were doing like the, the biggest gathering Oh, of yeah, the big drum, the yeah. drummer shot. Yeah. And I had yep. to split and go, I think if, like Flock had to go to the Honda Center. We were doing the show that night. Oh. And uh, we were playing like the Bangles and Tone Loke and a bunch of other interesting yeah. bands. But I was so bummed because, you know, I wanted to be part of that drummer shot. But um, yeah, I know she's a big fan of yours. I think, you know, every time like you post some drummer stuff, you know, she's always out there sharing it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, um, the the Tom Petty thing, the fact that you were able to pass it on to your bride is pretty sweet. That's, you know, very, yeah, again, I, I, I don't try to be, you know, grab because what, what the deal is, is we both shoot for 
intercom in Seattle. Okay. So we have the radio station and stuff. So we have KSW, The End, um, The Wolf, The Country. So between those stations, we get to shoot a lot of, you know, bands and stuff. But she has a lot of favorites. You know, she's she's the 80s. Yeah. She's she's the 80s. 80s chick okay so any of that stuff you know i mean yeah. like i wanted to shoot i wanted to shoot vanilla ice oh <laughs> man i forget the thing he was on but she i let you know she shot it yeah she she can have it he's you a, know so i don't like i don't like grabbing all the stuff you know I mean, yeah that's she, nice to be to share. what she's into and i like to i like to share it you know that's a good uh, good partnership you know, I talked about bangles, you know, Suzanne Hoffs was like, you know, my childhood crush. All the right? bangles, yeah. When we, when they first came to the Roseland, where you were talking about in Portland, um, mm-hmm. uh, the owners there, Dave Lycan and, and Patty, she knew that I was a huge Susanna fan. And so I was at the show with my wife at the time and, and I'd been with my wife since we were 12. So she knew Ooh. about the whole childhood crush stuff, right? <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, and Suzanne, I was looking good that night and, and um, the manager for Rosalind came over and she said, do you want to come down and say hi? And then I said, uh, well, of course. And yeah, my wife goes, go on ahead. And I go, no, no, I, I, you know, you should come with. And she goes, no, 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 you go have your time. And I said, I need you to come and take pictures. <laughs> and so like she was a sport about it and it was, it was cool, but uh, it's nice when you've got that kind of partnership, right. With your, uh, your partner. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fight, fight with it. You know, it's like, there's always maybe another opportunity, you know, hopefully not with Tom yeah. Petty, of course, but uh, yeah. did you ever shoot prints? No. And I tried. Yeah. I tried. It's hard. Impossible time. to get a photo pass for him. Yeah. And I, and I yeah. think that's what it was, wasn't it? Like he didn't allow photographers mm-hmm. or yeah. something, but uh, God, yeah, he, that would have been, that would have been pretty cool, but I don't know of anybody. I don't either. That Sean. Yeah. I mean, I, I've talked to, you know, friends in the show that played with him in the band, mm-hmm. but even them, you know, they, they, they hardly had any photos with Prince. Cause it's not like you walk up with your buddy and say, Hey, you know, let me grab a shot for the road. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a, it's unfortunate, you know, but yeah. also kind of cool. Cause it's more mysterious. Right. And, yeah, that's true. Oh, and, and I'll say for my, uh, this guy I gave you two. Yeah. My Is third it? one. Yeah. It, it's going to be kind of a tie. Um, Michael Jackson. Oh, wow. And I was set, I was set up because he was going to do that tour before he, he died. Right. With Orianti. Yeah. And he was, I think it was the Tacoma dome here. And, I was, I knew I was going to get it. You know, I knew I was going to get it. And then he passed away. Oh, and I'm like, man. oh man. I'm like, that's, that's a bummer. Yeah. That's, well, that's, you know, it, you, I think what you're going to have to do is make sure that whenever you get lined up for photo passes, you try and get them for the beginning of the tours so you can catch them before they pass, you know, <laughs> anymore, yeah. man. It's, I, uh, it's, it's a drag with yeah. the pandemic kind of hopefully coming to an end soon. Um, you have anything lined up for shows upcoming? Uh, I actually just shot my first concert Saturday night. Really? Where here? At? Yeah. At the, in Bremerton at the Admiral theater with um, no quarter oh, the Zeppelin sweet. tribute. Yep. They're man, great, dude. man. Wow. That's a great tribute. I'm like, you know, I've seen tribute bands and then there's no quarter. Yeah. I mean, they're, they are, they're amazing for sure so, totally amazing so yeah so they uh so it was great i got i got hired by them and went and did some band shots did some you know other shots and then shot the whole show and and i think they had they had like two newer members in the band so you know they needed some newer content stuff yeah and uh yeah that was a blast and it was so weird after a year well yeah, March 3rd of 2020 was the last time I shot a concert. Oh, really? Okay. So over a year. And uh, the one thing I learned real quick, I got to get back into shape. Oh, because yeah. my arms, I mean, although I've been, I would did tons of yard work the day before, but it was my legs because I was running, you know, you run up, up to the balcony, down back to the stairs, this, there, there. And I just was like, Ugh. it's like, yeah you know, I'm, I'm feeling it you know the pandemic was not good for no. for staying yeah today. yeah no it's different so, muscles you're using different muscles yeah, for sure different muscles so God. you know but uh yeah I, uh, in the future um 
Journey is doing Lollapalooza. Wow, They're headlining really? Lollapalooza. Yeah. Interesting. So that's that's hopefully July 31st. Okay. If everything goes well in Chicago. And um, then um, October, there's a, a, a kind of a offshoot of Monsters of Rock Cruise, but it's called, uh, Mo- I think it was called Monsters on the Mountain or something like that. And that's going to be in uh, Tennessee oh, wow. in October. And I think it's three days and it's outside of knoxville so oh my gosh yeah so i don't know who the bands are yet or anything but we just kind of announced it yesterday and the day before so that's going to be something cool and uh yeah then 2022 man it looks like it's going to be a it should be a good thing for all of us yeah i mean those shots that you got from the perspective of stage where you see the fans out there you know arms in the air I think people are going to blow up. I mean, really, they'll spontaneously combust because they're so ready for live music. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, what, what do you think? I mean, even for like you, what's it going to feel like when you get back on that stage and you're <sighs> behind your drums and you're like, you know, you got a thousand people in front of you and they're, like you said, yeah, you're going to go ape shit. I'm, I mean, seriously. I, I got goosebumps today at lunch. I was talking to a friend about it and and he said, Cause he's not a musician. He's a DJ right? it was radio. And now he does like events. And, and he said, he's a huge GNR fan. He said, Man, I was listening <laughs> to guns and roses on the way over here, listen to civil war. And he said that breakdown yeah. where it's all quiet. And then all of a sudden, boom, it comes in. And he said, I got goosebumps. And he said, I just picture what it's going to be like for you. Do you ever get that feeling? And I said, mm-hmm. exactly the way you described it. I said, you know, when you, there are points where, dynamically you build something up so big yeah. and and it's you can't explain it it sounds a little sexual you know because it's yeah. kind of like you know a lot of blood flow but yeah. it's uh it's kind of orgasmic right and you yeah. it, it doesn't happen very often right it's no. just a weird thing where the the music is right the atmosphere is right and then the crowd vibe you know yeah. you could do streaming concerts all day long man and i could go out and play my drums in my studio and it doesn't matter. It feels horrible because I want to interact with the crowd. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. you could go out and shoot a band on stage, but if you don't have people breathing down your neck and, and kind of sweat dripping from <laughs> this kind of thing, it wouldn't be the same. Right. I mean, you're, no. I, I would bet that you really feed off the energy of the crowd as well. And you're shooting. Yeah. It, it, you know, and the weird thing when, when you say that is like with journey and you're like at a arena or a stadium, and they're playing their same songs they've played for years. You, I've heard it a million times, mm-hmm. you know, and stuff. But there's always those nights where all of a sudden, you know, they'll start off a song and the crowd just goes crazy. And you're just like, you mean your hairs on your arms stand up because it's just that electricity <laughs> of people in, into the music and everything. And it's just that whole thing that people I know when they finally get back to a show yeah it's just gonna be it's gonna be crazy yeah i i cannot wait man i what i can't wait for is um the other experience you get i mean because you're shooting this the the stage you're shooting the interaction that they have Mm -hmm. what i miss also is the backstage hangs i mean that's what this show is about right my buddies that we're touring with if we get a chance to be on here all the stuff that we would talk about back on the couch is kind of what I do on the show. Yeah. And, and you've had an opportunity where you're not just shooting these artists and these musicians, but you're actually getting to know them. You know about their families and you find out about, Oh yeah, that guy can't eat this on catering. Otherwise he's in mess or whatever, you know, and yeah. it's kind of cool to get a perspective that you never would before, you know, and talking about perspective. I mean, as a photographer, right. You get to paint that picture in a, in a totally different way. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, it, you know, like with all the cruises and stuff, all those bands and all those members, I mean, you meet them on the cruise, you hang with them and then they tour and then you hang with them in your own town and yeah. stuff. And it, it's, you know, it, it's a, it's a second family. Yeah. That's you really- know, for sure. It, it, it's, you know, and, and I always make a joke because my wife's saying, you know, sometimes they, they treat you better in your own family. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause they don't know all the idiosyncrasies. Yeah. They don't know. all. Yeah, exactly. So it's always, uh, 
you know, when certain people come to town and stuff, you know, it's like, you want to hang, you know? Yeah. That's great though. that, you know, if you can be the go-to where they know that iron Mike is the, when we come anywhere in the Pacific Northwest, we call iron Mike. He's the guy that knows where what's up, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. Like, we, like with all the bands between me and Neil, <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, <laughs> we take our buddies and our bands, we show them all around. We take them, you know, a lot of them are into the grunge thing. So we take sure. them to certain areas and, you know, especially with the Pacific Northwest, there's so oh, much here. There is so much, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was just thinking about museum, the MPOP, you know, it used to be the EMP experience oh, right. music project. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. For you guys watching, if you haven't been there, it's, it, you know, um, it's really great. It's a cultural museum, a cultural mm. museum about music, especially developed in the Northwest. So there's oh, yeah. sections of Hendrix and there's sections of Nirvana and, and um, areas dedicated to talking about the different booms in, in the eras. And there are rooms where you can go in and play drums and guitar. And, <laughs> and um, But it, I love the way that they've made this historical society out of it, where they document everything and mm -hmm. documenting with photos. There's a lot of great photography in there. I was going to yeah. ask, do you happen to have it? Are there any Iron Mike photos in there yet? If there is, I don't know. Okay. But yeah. I've taken a bunch in there. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure, man. I, yeah. well, I, you've got all those negatives. I was thinking those might be something in the archives that, uh, yeah. Um, Cause one thing I like to ask, you know, when, when I wrap conversations on the show, I like to know about people's legacy. Um, with musicians, a lot of times, you know, people might think that the songs they leave behind are the legacy they want to leave. But a lot of times people have some different perspective. I was going to see for you. You know, you've got a lot of lasting memories that you're leaving people. What uh, What's the Iron Mike legacy that you'd like to leave behind? Ooh, now that's a question. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I mean, it'd be easy to say the legacy is, I mean, my photos, obviously. I mean, they're online. They might be on there forever. Mm -hmm. But for legacy-wise, I, I just want to be, I, I want people to, like oh man how do i even explain it like i'm a cool dude to be around i like to be the guy that has fun you know and yeah. and respect people and stuff and not take advantage sure of, of the you know the opportunities i get or the situations whatever and uh just to have fun i mean i just want to be known as a guy that likes to have fun and do his, you know, do his thing. I love it. Yeah. I mean, you that because, because today, you know, it's just, there's so much stress going uh, on and this and that. And, you know, people not having fun like they should, you know. They, Amen. You know, it's just like they're just not, it, not having that fun. Yeah. So when I step in a room, it's like, if you don't like to laugh or you don't like to smile or, or, whatever you're gonna hate me flip the fun switch when mike comes yeah, in i like yeah, that man switch. i dig it go. man i i love that i um if say a band's coming through and they want to get a hold of mike savoya how do they get a hold of iron mike to book yet uh, they usually hit me on facebook okay you know? i mean it's like i'm everywhere <laughs> yeah facebook yeah. instagram twitter whatever and you're yeah. literally everywhere every time i go see a rock show right there's yeah. especially in seattle you know, but, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I man. try, I try to, you know, I love traveling. That, I love getting out there and I, yeah. Out. Well, maybe, uh, when, uh, when you're out with journey, you know, we'll be able to overlap on some shows. It'd be fun oh, to kind man. of see you. And yeah. I definitely got to come out and see you play, man. We, you, the tours that we've got coming up are pretty cool, man. We we've got the lost 80s stuff again, where we're playing with, I think, um, you know, romantic oh, yeah. and, yeah. uh, you know, th those are really fun. And we've done Seattle a couple of times, you know, we did, um, uh, the zoo outdoor concert series. I think the last oh, tour yeah. there, but, yeah. Uh, Woodland um, park. Is that yep, the Woodland, that's right. Woodland yeah. Park. But, uh, you know, usually we actually, we bypass Portland, and Seattle all the time. We do Vancouver and then yeah. we'll ride, right. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, there's never any opportunity for me to, to have a say, I just show up and play, you know, but yeah. I, well, uh, hopefully, hopefully soon, you know, we can hook up somewhere too, you know, I love remember it. I got that eighties wife over there. Oh you know, uh, yeah. Big flock of seagulls. <laughs> oh really? Okay. Well, the, like, uh, 
Um, it's kind of cool. I, I don't know if you knew when I first started doing the shows, I, I put everything over on YouTube and I had a contest. So I was asking people to subscribe. When I hit a mm. thousand subscribers, I was, I drew a random name of somebody to take over my show and the interview of Flock of Seagulls. Cause we'll be oh. in San Diego next week. We've got a show on Saturday night in, uh, right. in San Diego. And so Friday night, I think the sixth, um, this, former radio personality in Kansas city is the one that got, won the contest and he's going to interview us. And, um, Oh, wow. It's, you know, and he's actually a huge eighties fan, which is kind of cool. And, you know, he, yeah. he gets a little flock package of stuff that I'm sending. Oh, him. But, that's uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's kind of interesting to be on the other side this time, you know, but yeah. I can't, it's strange to imagine being on stage again. I'll be honest with you, man. I, yeah. I, 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 uh, I can't wait though. I can't wait. Yeah. Are Hopefully. you guys do, have you have you guys done re, like doing rehearsals uh, over online or <laughs> no no I'm going down two days early um, but okay, we, yeah. our guitarist lives in Toronto and so he can't come he's he can't locked, get out no he's yeah. locked down so we got a sub for that we're playing Catalina another one of those oh. festivals um, wow. with a, with a bunch of bands and um, I think the night before um, and so we'll have a sub for a few shows which is oh, wow. he's a great great musician but it's yeah. never family right without yeah him. Oh, so. Wow. But I don't know that we've all, we, you know, I've been in the band a while now and we've had four rehearsals total, <laughs> I think. So yeah. it's not like, you know, I mean, every, like singer lives in Liverpool, guitarist lives in Toronto, bass wow. player lives in San Diego, you know? So that's awesome. Uh, yeah. It's, it is a cool thing. You know, yeah. it, the, the, the beauty of what we do, you and I, you know, yeah. we can go anywhere and we can do anything. I, um, hopefully. And, thank, and thanks for the internet. Thank you. God for the internet. Yeah, what would we do in the pandemic without the internet? We'd be hosed. Uh, right? We'd have to read man. books or something. Uh, <laughs> and, uh. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Not not on the Kindle. You'd have to read a real hardcover book, <laughs> like like this one, louder than hell's given to me. Oh the, yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> the, that one. Yeah, the, 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 the definitive oral metal. history of metal. Yeah, I yeah. don't have any books laying around here. Quite. Uh... <laughs> I had it actually. Could... You know what I have? I have my old. <laughs> MBA. Oh yes, uh, the, your, that's, yeah. The Sonics on the cover. What is this? Oh, this is the seventy nine nineteen eighty. Oh my and, god! And uh, uh, look at this. That is great. great. Oh, where there it is. Magic Johnson signed my book. Wow! Right there, dude. Why don't you yeah, have so that thing framed? I know. What uh, is up with it? You know what? I could probably yeah. buy a couple lenses with this. Yeah, you could, man. <laughs> that's the hardest thing as a photographer, isn't it? Lenses are ridiculous. Uh, oh. Man. Yeah, and, I know. And, it's like, I wouldn't say it's never, it's not really, it is ending because you, once you get your cameras, yeah, you have it, you have your lenses, you know, stuff, but you know, it's like, I need that one big one, you know, that just 600 millimeter where it's just like, I'm going to get that whale out there. We were talking earlier. Oh man. You know? If you do, or, yeah. if you get some good shots of the whales, I definitely can't wait to see those on your Facebook page, yeah, man. You, uh, You've got a gift. You really do, man. Yeah. I, I love your work. And I, uh, as much as I love your work, I love your attitude. You know, it's really cool to see you bringing that kind of joy to metal and the industry and, and, you know, it's a, <laughs> yeah, happy it's, metal here. <laughs> I, I, you know, I've been told before, man, there's no smiling because I was in, you know, heavy yeah. rock bands and, and a metal band. There was a band called yeah. Craving Theo that was on Columbia. Yeah. And then I was playing drums with them and the singer's mom was the manager. And she'd say like, <laughs> there's no smiling in heavy metal. You got to stop that. And like, <laughs> there's no moms as managers in heavy metal either. So, to yeah. back up, you know, but I, uh, yeah, man, if you don't have fun with what you're doing, there's no point. Right. So exactly. That's what we're I, have my, I have my little hashtag where it's like, uh, you know, have fun or go home. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah. Like what's the point really? Yeah, what's the point in anything? Right. Yeah. Mike so. Savoya, Iron Mike, man. I'm so <laughs> glad to get to hang with you today. And uh, thanks for working through the tech issues to get this oh, yeah. away. I'm excited yeah. to get to see your photos. And I'm really glad that you've been out shooting. We'll watch for your no quarter yeah. shots. And, and oh, uh, yeah. I, yeah. Um, if you guys are out there, it's uh, his name is listed on here. It's S-A-V-O-I-A, -A, Mike Savoya, Iron Mike Savoya. Go find him on Instagram, Facebook, oh, yeah. Twitter, all those things. And, yeah. uh, and book him if you want cool shots. He's the, uh, he's the, the, um, the goat, right? The, the smiling goat. goat. That's right. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> well, goat. give your, give your bride a, uh, you know, a hug for me and let her I know, will. you know, I'll give you a real vaccinated hug when we are <laughs> totally there. And, uh, I can't wait to see you again, man. 
Yeah. And, uh, thanks again, folks, for watching. Yeah. Back here on Thursday, Yarrow Craner, visionary dude who's uh, making the world better with this massive think tank of uh, visionaries and experts. So it's uh, three o'clock on Thursday. I look forward to seeing you guys all here. And Mike Savoy, thank you so much Ooh, for the man. afternoon, man. It's really thank good to hang. You, you got you it, again. buddy. Have a yeah. great week.